was filled with his praises. One day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on the tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. Seal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he rose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified. Freely forever, one day is coming, oh glorious day. One day the trumpet will sound for his coming. One day the, star, the skies with his glory will shine. Wonderful day, my beloved ones bringing glorious day. This Jesus is mine, living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day. Amen. I don't know how she did that, but it sounded great. I, I tell you, 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 you hear it one way all your life, and then you go, I, I, that'd be very difficult. But thank you, Isabel. She did a wonderful job, and, and the message was there. We want to turn in our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter number 16. Uh, of course, we've been doing a uh, Sunday night series on discipleship. Uh, we've covered uh, several aspects of it, and tonight we want to look at the uh, aspect of maturity, spiritual maturity. Now, um, the question is, what is spiritual maturity? I mean, we all will agree uh, that every born-again believer needs to uh, grow up and grow on from the initial uh, event of our salvation, being born again. In fact, the book of Hebrews mentions, let us now go on, he says. Uh, let, uh, don't lay down the same uh, beginning truths that we learn. Let's move on after we've had the principles uh, laid down in our life. But uh, maturity, uh, spiritual maturity, is not just about age. <coughs> Well, you can be 100 years old and be spiritually immature. Uh, sometimes you would always like to acquaint uh, age for a child of God. If you say, well, they're on up in uh, their uh, elder years, that doesn't necessarily be, mean that they're going to have a nature about them that has grown in grace and knowledge. It, it just doesn't equate. Uh, Maturity is not 
about appearance. Uh, we we uh, don't have that so much now, but in years gone by, you know, you had to look spiritual. And there were certain ways you looked spiritual, the way you carry your Bible and, you know, the, the kind of coat or your tie you wore or, or uh, you know, there are just certain things that people say, well, they look like they're, they're spiritual. And uh, but that, that's not, that doesn't equate either to spiritual maturity. So what is it? Well, it's not about achievement. Uh, there's a lot a person can do and accomplish without being spiritually mature. Why, uh, looking back over the lifetime of when I first got saved, uh, the bus ministry was going full-fledged. And, uh, man, we, we'd load those buses up by the dozens. At one year, uh, the church I was a member of and I was a bus captain there, they had 60-plus buses ran every Sunday morning. And they averaged... 60 people per bus. Now, if you want to see something strange, you look at 36, 3,700 kids running around unsupervised by their parents. It was, uh, at times, chaotic. But uh, you could get a lot done. You could see a lot of kids saved. You could see parents get saved. And we were in an air uh, where parents looked for bus people to come around on Saturday so they could get rid of their kids on Sunday. And they'd send them on the bus. Uh, sometimes the kids would be gone five, six hours. Uh, and parents were fine with that. Now, I know, and you know, we live in a different era now. Uh, if you even uh, come to their door trying to uh, get kids to ride a bus, you're suspect from the moment you walk up there. There was a day that wasn't so. Uh, I know even here we, uh, we ran buses for years until it got to where it, it literally, the, the people were calling the law on us on a, a weekly basis uh, saying these, these men are out here, you know. And I understand. I understand the culture they live in. And uh, so uh, somebody comes to my door, you know, generally they're suspect. I, I, I may be uh, bad about this, but I'm suspicious. Uh, you know, they'll ring my doorbell and then they step back, you know, where you can't get a good view of them on the camera. And uh, you, first thing you think, they're setting us up. They're trying to uh, check out our house and see where the security problems are. And, and in many cases, that's right. That's what they do. Uh, so, uh, but, but, but achieving something like uh, being seeing God use your life, you can you can be blessed of God and still be very spiritually immature. That's the whole concept. Hey, you don't uh, you can't just because you gain an academics uh, a Bible academics doesn't make you mature. I mean, there's there's some fellows who've got PhDs out of cemeteries and THDs and uh, multiple degrees and just as immature spiritually as you could ever expect. Just because you graduate from seminary doesn't equate to spiritual maturity. Also, you can't compare yourself to others uh, to uh, in, be able to gauge yourself. That's the problem when I say, when we say, uh, what is spiritual maturity? Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's me and not them. <laughs> I'm spiritually mature, but they're not. Why? Because they do this and I don't. Uh, that's not maturity. Maturity, biblical maturity, is to grow up complete in Christ Jesus, to be more Christ-like in your words, actions, and deeds, to be more surrendered with the members of your body unto the Lord Jesus Christ, to be completed and uh, uh, in him. Now, uh, without you turning there, I want to read to you what Moses, uh, Moses had a real grip on being spiritually mature. I, I located this uh, this afternoon when uh, 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 I thought about it and I, I recalled what Moses had done. 
Moses appeared before the Lord and he says, Now therefore, I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way that I may know thee. Moses' prayer was to know the way of God and to understand God more completely. He wanted to be mature in the faith. So he asked God, he said, if, 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 I'm, if you will show me your grace, here's what, I, I don't want you to give me money. I don't want you to make me taller. I don't want you to make me more esteemed among my brethren. What I want you to do for me is to give me an opportunity to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord. And then he said that I may find grace in thy sight and consider that this is nation is thy people. And here's what the Lord said. The Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken. For thou hast found grace in my sight and I know thee by name. So the Lord was blessed from Moses asking to know him better. I say that because that is really the definition of maturity. It is the desire and the growth of a child of God to be more complete in your knowledge and understanding of who God is. We never, ever achieve full maturity. Even the Apostle Paul, he said, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. I've not, Paul said, got to the point where I'm not, uh, I've reached spiritual maturity. But he says, I do this, I continue to move on, and those things that are behind me, I've moved on. And those things before me, I press towards. I want to grow in grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, as we look at, uh, at this passage before us in 1 Corinthians chapter number 16, uh, we'll see some evidences uh, not to be able to gauge yourself and see if you're mature, but I think some of these things are clear on the evidence of what it is to be mature. Uh, if you're mature, certain things ought to show up in your life. And verse number 13 says, Watch ye, stand fast in faith, quit you like men, be strong, let all your things be done with charity. Uh, one fellow described it like this. He said, it may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird, but it, we, it would be a jolly uh, sight harder for it to learn how to fly while remaining in the egg. Now get the picture, an egg flying around. Uh, we expect that egg to hatch is what we expect. And a child of God doesn't need to continue as an egg. He needs to continue as a flying child of God. So there's got to be some continued work in his life. In fact, Psalmist said, The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. So th that's the truth. To mature is to continue growing. Like, and, and he says like a palm tree. Now we've got palm trees out in front of our church. And right now, uh, three out of four of them are limited. And the reason why, the ones that were out there died. Two of them were broken off by a storm. And if you notice, a palm tree has that crown of palms. Well, once the wind came and Sally and snapped the head of it, it took them about a year and a half, two years before they finally gave up the ghost. And by giving up the ghost, that means they dropped their palm limbs continually till the bark started falling off the palm tree. So what we did, we put new palms in. There's three new ones out there. All three of them, we're waiting for their growth. They have little shoots about this tall, bunched together, in green palm. Now I hope when you leave here tonight everybody will look, see what I'm talking about. The, the one on the end, it's, it's flourishing. It's got, it looks like a regular palm tree. Now the others look like sticks. But two of them we put in last year and they're already showing some flourish. A little bit, 
The one we put in here about a month and a half ago, it just looks like a stick. In fact, every time I drive up here, I go, that's an odd looking rendition of a tree. Now it's got a root basis. My, you ought to see the root basis of these palms, they're huge. But I'm hoping and praying that sometime before the summer, it'll show some growth. Well, that is what the psalmist said. The righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. We're, we're to say, there ought to be some changes. And it ought to look like we're growing and developing. Well, uh, the book of Ephesians uh, says this in chapter 4, verse 15. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him in all things. We ought to grow up into him. That's becoming complete in him. Becoming uh, basically a place or a quality of being fully grown or developed. So all of these things continue to give us some idea what spiritual maturity is. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. Now we're not left to be, you know, just saved and satisfied. There's a lot of Christians today that they seem to be okay with just being saved. Their life is, doesn't change. They fight change. The Lord deals with them about a problem and they'll struggle against him in that problem for months, maybe years. And uh, thank God he eventually uh, was chasing you and I in the place we ought to be and into being who we ought to do. And, and, and that's why it says no uh, chastening at this present time uh, uh, seems to be good. It seems to be, it actually is grievous to go through the development that God puts on our life. But in the end, it says it, re, it yields peaceable fruit. So anybody's ever done with a fruit jury, you know there's some trimming going on. There's some sculpting. And uh, uh, it doesn't, if you do it right, it doesn't kill it. But, and it may look like it set it back. But eventually that pruning is what produces the real fruit. I, uh, there's rarely you find a flower uh, that you're not supposed to trim, but there's one flower that uh, does better, and there's only one that I know of that does better without any trimming. And that's the hydrangea plant. Uh, if you leave a hydrangea plant alone, next year you're going to have blooms. Don't, if somebody says, I'm going to go trim that thing back, because it looks awful, some of these dead sticks that come out of it. But if you'll go there and cut it all off, you'll be sitting there with green leaves next year. But that's the only one I know of, and, and, and that's, a, that's a rare thing to see that. Every other uh, flower or plant that you see come forth every year with great blooms, it's because somebody went in there and did some trimming on it. Got rid of the dead and uh, enjoyed the peaceable fruit uh, that came forth in it. So, so uh, maturity is the state or quality of being fully grown. And of course, it is the opposite of immaturity. <laughs> and we know that spiritual immaturity has produced many a conflict in a Christian's life and certainly in the life of a, a gathering uh, of the people of God. Uh, you know, uh, used to be we'd have these prayer meetings, I remember as a kid, and uh, there'd be spiritually immature people stand up and give a prayer request. And rather than say, pray for my husband or pray for my wife, they'd get up there and say, Pray for my husband. Let me tell you what he did. <laughs> and boy, they were venting to the whole congregation the era of his way. And that's immaturity. That's that, and and that, that goes along all of through experiences of life. Uh, real maturity is becoming more Christ-like. And so the steps there uh, are fully uh, in front of us. It says, but grow in grace 
and in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so what can we do uh, to realize, is there any evidence in our life? Well, the first thing that comes up, it says, watch ye, watch ye. You see, there's a certain vigilance about the child of God who's growing. Now, when we grow in grace, we literally become more apt to discern and be able to discern good and evil. A young, immature Christian sometimes gets hoodwinked by not being able to tell what's good and what's bad. And, uh, uh, you know, in the doctrine, they don't have enough growth to where they can discern doctrine. And a lot of times, as the Bible said, they get carried away and tossed about with every wind in doctrine. That's not God's plan for the child of God. It's to be able to, to discern. So you have to be vigilant. Watch ye, he says. In fact, it, it, it's a word that was used for a military uh, sentry. He was to sit there and be alert and awake for the protection of the city. And he was not to be found at all uh, in a lethargic, uh, sleepy mode. He was to be the watchman, keep his eyes open. Now, there's a lot of things we ought to be willing to watch with. We know what uh, the book of Matthew says, watch and pray therefore uh, that you enter not into temptation. The spirit of dead is willing, but the flesh is weak. And so as we're being vigilant about things, be aware that we're under constant attack and being tempted by the world of flesh and the devil. If we're not alert to that, if we walk around with our uh, head in the sand and not looking 